Well, I hate to do it, but have to start off with some absolutely awful news. I don't know if you guys saw the footage. Uh, six people died Saturday when two classic World War II planes collided in midair at a Dallas air show. Uh, authorities said Sunday that the crash left debris scattered around the airport and nearby highway and strip mall. The NTSB will lead a probe into what led to this tragedy at the Wings Over Dallas air show. Dallas Mayor Eric Johnson said that there were no reported injuries on the ground, but again, um, probably six people people uh, combine in each plane. I'm going to show it to you just because it is it is so bizarre if you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Okay. And it just hits it and they both just go down. A giant, you know more about planes, obviously. Uh, just a giant, giant, giant plane and then like this littler one just come in and it yeah. just crashes right into it. So they were like, it was like a, a B-17 or B-19 Maybe like World War II four-engine mm. bomber. And uh, then what they're probably doing is the dude and the Messerschmitt was a B-17. Oh, was I right Look the first you. guess? I only saw a second and a half <laughs> of it. Uh, then there's some dude in a Stuka or Messerschmitt or something. It would have been, I mean, should have been German or maybe a Zero, mm. like a Japanese. But also could have been like a... P-51 Mustang or something. So the idea was is they were simulating this thing, I'm guessing, this is the first time I've seen it, of the bomber, and then this would have been this German fighter plane like coming down from the sky, you know, to simulate what was going on back right. then. And the guy who was coming down was supposed to give him, a, give him a flyby, and instead of missing by 10 feet, you know. Went right into him. Well, his yeah. blind spot is underneath. Uh, down and below, oh, so his blind spot, right. and it looks to me like he's starting a, a quick left Go ahead, turn. Jeff. Yeah, well, you fly helicopters. See, so he's, you know. he's doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. It just looks like if uh, if that was nothing nefarious, he just missed it by that much. Yeah, he was he was doing. I mean, it was the whole uh, Rhodes uh, Ozzy Osbourne uh, camper bus thing. You know, you know, remember that story? <laughs> I, I just remember him rolling an ATV. No, uh, no, the, no. Uh, was it Rhodes? Who was it? Was, it? it was their bus driver. It was an amateur pilot, and he took Randy Rhodes up in an airplane early in the morning and tried to buzz the tour bus and, and crashed, crashed, oh. and killed him. Okay. Yeah, so he, the guy was fucking around, and uh, he took Randy Rhodes. It was like a guitar phenomenon playing for Ozzy Osbourne. It was like. I don't know, 23 or something, and said, let's go have some fun. Mm -hmm. you know. And of course, you're like, don't do it. And he's like, yeah. we're Ozzy sleeping in the tour bus. Let's just go buzz him. Well, he hit him. Oh. And uh, it's the funny thing is, is if you buzz him and you miss by six inches, it's the greatest story everyone ever yeah. has. No harm, no foul. But another six inches the other way, and everyone's dead. It's yeah. a tragedy. Yeah. What yeah. plane was Buzzing him though, Chris was that supposed to be like a German plane? But uh, anyway, I they're going to have to have rules, which is go up there, simulate whatever all you want, but no buzzing the right. the B seventeen. It was a P sixty three Cobra, which there was only oh, like there's that's only an like, American plane. There's only like two. There was only two left in the the flyable, and now there's like one. Mm. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Cobra. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, really, just one of those, I mean, call it a freak accident, but, you know, it's it's dangerous. It's pretty preventable. Yeah. They have those, they would have those, uh, must, they would have those B-17s take off from Van Nuys like once a year, and they'd go lumbering right over when I lived up in uh, Lake Hollywood. They'd fly right over Lake Hollywood, and they'd turn, they go right by the Why? Hollywood sign. There's just a, uh, like thing where once a year maybe on veterans day or something oh, they charge everyone yeah. you know 200 bucks a flight and you'd get into this vintage you know and take off and, and just lumber around and come circle back i know around. one of the pilots that, that was actually doing some of that buzzing around the valley on a couple of fourth of july's i think oh yeah maybe it's fourth of july yeah yeah and uh and when we lived uh this was not long ago this was six years ago five years ago mm -hmm. and uh yeah there's been a couple of fourth of july's where i'm like what who is doing this and how is this possibly legal yeah and it was and he was going he was going by celebrations <clears throat> yeah and sanctioned celebrations just flying around the valley doing flyovers and like a b-17 <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah huge thing 
Yeah. A Hercules. Who's in a Hercules? What's that? No, the Hercules. Okay, he was trans- in a Hercules. He was in a Hercules. So Hercules is a transport plane. Yeah, yeah. Still big ass plane. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So it wasn't a bomber. Mm. It's crazy. It's right. crazy. Now those guys would do it and then flack and so this was an American plane, the Cobra. So there was just somebody simulating what a you know, dog fight would be. Right. Ugh. Yeah, really sad. Yeah. Well, since it's only going to be fresh for, I don't know, maybe the rest of today, let's talk about Dave Chappelle hosting, or at least, you know, his, his opening 15-minute monologue. Uh, he usually does that after elections. His jokes mostly aimed at Kanye West and the Jewish community and uh, groups like the Anti-Defamation League, not a big fan of uh, most of the 15 minutes. Chappelle opened the bit by reading a statement saying, I denounce anti-Semitism in all forms, and I stand with my friends in the Jewish community. Then he added, that Kanye is how you buy yourself some time. (laughs) He then went on to talk about Jews in Hollywood in these two clips. I'm going to show you two. Here's the first one. So there were a lot of those. Uh, he also, and there he talked about Kyrie Irving, um, suspended from the a- NBA. By the way, still suspended, even after his apology. Um, Chappelle ended that bit by saying that Jews have been through a lot, but they can't blame those things on black Americans, which I thought was a very confusing statement that nobody had been making. Um, but here is another clip. So uh, some people not super happy about that. Among the critics is Adam Feldman. He's a theater critic for Time Out New York. Jewish guy. Uh, hard to say. Hmm. Unclear. I'm looking at that. Says, a Feldman character? That uh, <laughs> Critic for New, New York, York newspaper? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That Dave Chappelle SNL monologue probably did more to normalize anti-Semitism than anything Kanye said. Hmm. And, you know, I was talking to my friends about this today because I said, look, I if it's funny, it's funny. And if he's a, a well-crafted, if it's a well-crafted joke by a brilliant comedian, it just is. But it's like, we just had this election that's like fairly historical in terms of midterms anyway, and like, didn't come up, like, we're still talking about Kanye hates the Jews, like, can we just get, I'm Jewish, can we just get out of the spotlight for five minutes? Like, let's just leave us alone. You know? (laughs) Done and done. Well, that's the thing, it's like, yes, it does seem to be heavily populated by Jews, like Hollywood, I get it, but like, 99.9% of us have no affiliation. Like, we're just doing other shit. First off, groups shall inhabit certain roles right. in society. It never happens in in a complete bubble. Like I've said it all the time, LAX security is mostly black. I don't know why. Yeah. It just is. I'm I'm guessing somebody got a job there and then they got their niece a job there at some <laughs> point and before you know it, that's the culture right. at LAX. Uh, As a white man who travels, I'm not bothered by it because I'm assuming they're doing their job. But I would also say that the black person shouldn't need the fire department to represent the community. You just need a good fire department. And, you know, I've been in show business. It's there's many Jews in show business. Um, They're more on the executive side than they are in the talent side, although there's a few in the talent side. So what are you saying there? But uh, they're pulling the strings. Oh, boy. Here we go. Um, but, but here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you're a traveler and you don't have a weapon or a bomb on you, then you should travel through LAX regardless of what your ethnicity is, not having a care in the world. And oh, mo, many executives and many folks I've worked with uh, were Jewish, but... I assume that they wanted to make the most money and be the most successful with me, non-Jew. And and so they were willing to support, just like the guy who owns the professional football team may be Jewish, but the players aren't. He wants to win. You know what I mean? And I knew as long as that code was in place that it it sort of solves everything without having to take a head count because everyone who runs Comedy Central – could be Jewish. Dave Chappelle is not Jewish. Comedy Central wants to make money. Comedy Central will pay Dave Chappelle 50 million bucks to do a show on Comedy Central and not their cousin who's Jewish because they're not going to make any money off of that person. And the guy who owns the NFL franchise is not starting his Jewish kid as a DB on the Washington generals or Redskins or senators or forcers or whatever we're calling them now. The, The point is, is that system, that meritocracy 
everyone wants to make money system keeps everything kind of in check. Right. Well, you know, I think Comedy Central has had some real debates in the last few years Mm -hmm. on that very subject. And I was actually surprised some of the stuff that they let me keep in the show that's going to air the Mm -hmm. new special because, and we imagine our internal discussions where I honestly bet they're sitting around going, okay, do we want big ratings or do we want to be woke? Mm -hmm. Right. That's interesting that they're tacked tacking back to ratings. Uh, well, I don't know if they are. I think <laughs> I mean, I'm are. sure they are because, like I said, there's some stuff in there that, that yeah, I went, all like right. Jimmy's hosting the Oscars. Hollywood is getting away from woke and getting back to to ratings. And um, so, you know, and I never, I never thought about it for a second, but I think there's obviously... If you're from Brooklyn or you're Italian or you you know you went to uh, Wake Forest or something and there's someone else in the room like another executive like, hey, Wake Forest guy hey Brooklyn guy or hey Paisan or something you know there's like little elements of that that that's baked into the cake it goes with everything but you know Jimmy and I aren't Jewish we were on did plenty of shows on Comedy Central they wanted ratings they wanted right. to make money that's that. That kind of meritocracy thing is what saved that saves this. It's not somebody being hired to go right now on air. You have five white guys and only one woman of color. Like th- that doesn't fix it. That artificially moves things around and then pisses off one of the white guys who you have to cut. Like I'm going to take an Asian and remove them from UCLA to make room for a woman of color. All that does is piss people off and then you do get what you don't want which is now these Asians are coming together and they're angry you know and they're pushing back and there's a lawsuit yeah that does get into the tribalism at that point yeah. you go full meritocracy and uh, yeah I agree with you Gina I, I don't know why I have to talk about it I mean he's so much. Really fucking hilarious and it's a great you know he's, he's hilarious but I'm just kind of you know, I'm just kind of tired of it alright well yeah. be tired at home okay, let's bring well. it home <laughs> Time. I'm Gina Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina Grad. That was the news with Gina Grad. Well, let me tell you about my friend Jordan Harbinger. All right. Uh, Ari Shafir and Brad Williams bringing the comedy mm. uh, tomorrow, by the way. Jeff Dunham, Me the People, premieres uh, November 25th on Comedy Central. And also, you can just visit his website, jeffdunham.com. Because the big tour's kicking off, ladies and gentlemen. He's got his semis, and he's hitting the road. Yep. So we're looking for a big rating. It's the day after Thanksgiving. Friday, yeah. sitting around that night. Yay. He always delivers. The great Jeff Dunham. Thanks for joining us, Thanks for friend. having me. And Joel Stein. Story of the week with Joel Stein. And I'm going to be in the Rialto Theater in Tucson coming up December 15th. And then at the Improv, December 16th and 17th in Tempe. Just go to AdamCrow.com for all the live shows. Until next time, Adam Crow for Joel Stein, Jeff Dunham, and Gina Grad. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.